Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial for Iberian Railways. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full four-player game today. Now, I do want to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel in the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jungetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement-free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Now, I do want to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Now, as you can see, we have a big map of the Iberian Peninsula, and each player is trying to run their own railroad company as best as they can. Now, they're going to do that by placing these cubes out onto the board, and every cube placed represents railroad track for that company. In this game, players are only going to control the cubes of their specific color, and on a player's turn, they are going to perform one of four different actions. They are going to do that by moving their pawn over. This one right here lets them start new railway lines, where they're going to add cubes down to the map that are not connected to any other cubes of their color. This one right here is expand, and that lets you add on cubes to a track that was already laid for that color. After that, there is Merge, and this one lets you take two separate sets of track for the same color, and you merge them together by connecting them with your cubes, and the final action option lets you purchase business interest cards. As you can see, those cards are placed around the outside of the board, and each of them shows a city name, and I've tried to put them relatively close to the matching city over here on the map. Now, you have to pay money to take these business interests, and when you connect up to that city, you will actually gain that amount of income. Now, this is important because once a player has taken their main action, they are going to get income based off of their position on this track, and this position will go up as they connect more of the towns, minor cities, major cities, as well as Lisbon and Madrid. Getting money from this income is great because you can use it to buy business interests as well as lay track, but after you take your income, you will also have to pay back the interest on your loans. At the start of the game, players have no money, so they must take loans, and they have to pay this amount of interest based off of where their cube is. And if you don't have enough money to pay the interest, well, you're going to have to take a loan to pay off that interest. So, as I said, each player will take one of these actions, they will then get income and pay interest on their loans, and it is worth noting that out here on the map, these hexagon locations can have at most two of these cubes, so we definitely have to pay attention to where our opponent's cubes are to make sure we can get where we need to go. Now the game is going to keep being played until any one player has no cubes in front of them. At that point, the game will be over and we will count up victory points. The player who has the highest income will get a victory point, and then the player with the most money on hand after suffering a cash penalty for loans will get two points, and then one point will be given to the player who has connected the most towns with their cubes. After that, one point goes to the player with the most towns connected to their railways, then the minor cities and major cities. Also, the player with the longest contiguous line of railways will get a point, and the player with the most business interests in front of them will get one point. Once you add all of that together, the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Now, I will describe the details of how all of these things work while we are playing, and I think it's now time to start the game. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the blue player down here, and we are the starting player of the game, which means we can now take the first turn. So, let's start by focusing over here on the four action options. As you can see, we have our action pawn on the expand spot, and all players' pawns begin there at the start of the game. Now, on our turn, we have to move this to a new action, which means we are not allowed to do the action where that token is. So on this turn, we could either start a new line of rails out on the map, we could merge rails on the map, but at the moment we don't actually have any, so this action doesn't do anything for us, or we could go over here and purchase a business interest, which are these cards around the outside of the map. Now I think for this first turn, we want to start a new railway, which means we can now place our track cubes down on the map to start that railway off. Now when you start a new railway, none of the newly placed cubes can be put adjacent to a hexagon that already has a cube of that color, because of course, if they were adjacent, then we would be expanding, not starting a new one. Now the first thing to point out is this build limit track at the top of the board. At the beginning of the game, the token is at the three, and that means we have a build limit of three cubes on our turn, regardless of the action we chose. That's fine though, I think we just want to place two cubes to start this railway. Now this new railway can be placed anywhere on the board as long as none of the newly placed cubes are put into hexes that are adjacent to a spot that has another cube of that color. Right now we have no cubes on the map though, so we could go anywhere, and I think I'd like to start over here. 
In particular, we are going to begin in Segovia, and when we create a new railway, we must connect up two or more of the urban hexes on the map. Now, an urban hex is one that has a banner on it, so Segovia is an urban hex because it has that yellow banner right there, and then Madrid is also an urban hex. Now, in this case, Madrid is actually special, because you never actually place a cube onto the center part of Madrid. Instead, you put a cube onto one of the outer areas, and that counts as that railway being connected up to Madrid. So, just like that, we have connected Segovia up to Madrid, which means this is a legal new railway that we just placed. Now, I do want to point out some special aspects to the Madrid area. I already said you cannot put a cube into the middle, but it's also worth noting that you can have at most one cube in any of these outer Madrid areas. So now that we've placed a cube right here, we cannot place any more of our cubes in the other outer Madrid spots for the rest of the game. It's also worth noting that these outer Madrid spots can hold at most one cube, whereas every other spot on the board can have two cubes in that specific hex. So we've selectively created a new railway, and now we can take the income for this line. As you can see, we connected up a yellow urban city to a white urban city. And with that in mind, we can look up here to this chart to figure out how much income we will get. As you can see, the yellow towns will give us two income, and Madrid is the only white urban hex, and that will get us six. Now, it is worth noting that the second railway placed into the non-Madrid urban spots will give one less income. So that means if there was already a cube in Segovia when we placed into it, we would only get one income instead of two, but Madrid is exempt from this penalty. Every player who connects up to Madrid will get the six income. So that means we are going to get six plus two or eight income right now. With that in mind, we can look over here to the income track and move our cube down to the eight money spot. That means that later on in this turn, we are going to gain eight money as part of our income, but that has not happened just yet. And at this moment, it's now time for us to pay the track costs involved with putting those cubes down. With that in mind, let's focus over here. And as you can see, we have to count up the number of cubes that we placed on this turn and then pay the associated number of money. And we placed two cubes, which means we have to spend seven money, but we also might have some additional track costs depending on where each of those cubes were placed. Now, every cube that's placed onto a rural river spot is going to cost one extra money. Every spot put onto a rural hill is going to also cost one extra money. And every cube placed onto a hex that already had another cube in it will cost one extra money. Remember, every hex on the board, except for the outer Madrid spots, can have at most two cubes in them. So let's focus back over here, and remember that the two cubes will cost us seven money as a base cost, and then you'll notice that neither of these cubes went into a hill location, and neither went into the rivers, so we don't have to spend extra money for those. And as you can see, none of these cubes were the second cube in a hex, so we won't have any additional track costs from that either. This means overall we now have to spend seven money for laying this track. So let's focus down here into our player area, and as you can see, we don't actually have any money. We do have to spend that, though, and fortunately for us, we can take loans. All of the players start the game with zero money, so they are going to need to take loans in that first turn, and taking loans is a free action that we can do as many times as we want on our turn. With that in mind, let's focus over here on the loan track. This number on the right side tells you how many loans that player has, so as you can see, we all start with zero loans. Now, every time we take a loan, we are going to get five money from the bank. And remember, we currently owe seven money for laying that track. So we are going to have to take a minimum of two loans because that is going to get us five plus five or 10 money. So we can immediately add that into our player area. And I think we are going to stop at two loans because we do have to pay interest off for these. And these two loans do cover the amount of money that we have to spend right now. As I said before, we have to spend seven money so we can put 10 back into the bank and then take three money as change. At this point, the final thing that we have to do for this action is adjust the build limit. Now, every time you place at least one cube down onto the map, you have to move this build limit up once, and it does not matter if you started a new railway, expanded one, or merged a couple railways together. As long as one cube went down, you move this forward. That means now players can place up to four cubes on one action, and it is worth noting that this token will never go down, and also that the token will max out at 8, so at no point during the entire game will players be able to put more than 8 cubes down for one action. Alright, our action is done, so we can look down here and see that the next thing that we do is receive our income. It looks like that is going to be 8 money, and then we have to pay off our loan interest. The interest is on the left side of this loan track, so as you can see we now have to pay 2 money back to the bank. And fortunately, we have more than enough to make that happen. Now, at this point, the final thing that we can do is pay off one of our loans. And this is optional, but it's worth emphasizing you can only pay off one loan on each of your turns, even though you can take as many loans as you want to. 
Now, the cost for paying off that loan is going to be six money. Remember, we got five money from the bank for taking that loan. Now, I do think that we want to do this. So we are going to spend six of our money back to the bank, and then our loan token will go up once. All right, our turn is done, which means play can move clockwise over to the yellow player. And they have also decided to start a new railway. Now, the build limit is currently at four, so they could place all four of these cubes down to start the new railway, but four tracks does cost 18 money, and they've decided to instead just place three. Now, they are going to start over here. They'll put one cube into Lisbon, one cube there to expand the railway, and then the third one will go into Setubal. Now, that has connected at least two urban hexes, and one of them is blue, whereas the other one is yellow, and they are the first into both of them. The blue is only associated with Lisbon, and that is going to be 5 income, and then of course the yellow is associated with 2, so they will get 7 income total, which will bring them up to 7, and then they have to pay the track cost. 3 tracks are going to cost 12 money total, and they don't have any additional track costs to spend, and they currently don't have any money. So they are going to take 3 loans, which is going to get them 15 money, and then they can spend 12 of that money in order to pay for the tracks. After that, the build limit will be increased to 5, and now yellow can take their income of 7. Now, they know they are going to immediately be spending 3 of their money to pay off the interest on these loans, so they're just going to take 4 money total from the bank. After that, they can pay off up to 1 loan, and they are going to do that. Remember, each loan paid off is going to cost 6 money. Yellow is done, so now the green player can go. And they have also decided to start a new railway. Uh, as I said before, players could start a railway or purchase a business interest for the first action. And while purchasing a business interest is not a bad idea, getting some track on the board is also a good thing. And it wouldn't surprise me if Red ends up doing this as well. Now the build limit is currently at 5, so the green player could put up to 5 cubes down, which would cost 25 money. And they've decided they are going to keep it simple and just place 2 cubes down. And they are going to connect up to Madrid just like we did. They've decided to put this cube there and that one there. And then they have connected up the white with the yellow. So that is 6 plus 2, or 8 income, which means they go up to the 8 spot on the track. Now, there are no additional costs for the placements they just did. So they do have to spend 7 money, and they currently don't have any. So just like us, they are going to take 2 loans. That will get them 10 money, and then they have to spend 7 of it immediately. So they are just going to take 3 money from the bank. After that, the build limit will increase once. After that, green can take their income of 8 money and then spend 2 money for their interest. So that means they'll end up with 6 money overall. And now they are going to pay off one of their loans. Alright, the red player can now take their turn. And they've actually decided they are not going to start a new rail line. They are going to make a business interest purchase. The way this works is the red player can purchase one of the business interest cards that are around the board. And they have to spend the money that is printed on that card. Now, they've decided to purchase the Bilbao business interest, which is going to cost four money. Currently, Red does not have any money, so they are going to take out one loan, which will get them five money, and then they can immediately spend four of that to take this business interest, which means they will have one money left over. After this, the Red player can put this business interest face up in front of them, and as soon as they connect that associated urban hex, they will complete this. They will then gain this amount of income and then flip the card over. So, because they took the Bilbao interest card, it seems pretty likely they are going to be heading up in that direction sooner rather than later. Well, their action is done, and now they can receive their income of zero money, and then they do have to pay off their interest of one. Fortunately for them, they do have one money left. It is worth noting, if they did not have enough money to pay this interest, they would have to take a loan to pay the interest, and you just pay the interest uh, before you take more loans instead of after. In this case, though, Red can spend this one money, so they have no money now, and now they cannot actually pay off this loan because they don't have any money to spend for it, so they are going to keep this loan going into their next turn. All right, they are done, which means we can move clockwise back over to us, and we now can take our turn. Since our token is on the start railway spot, that means we cannot do this right now. Instead, we could expand a previous railway that we have on the map. We could merge two of our railways together, except we currently only have one, so that action is still not going to be doing anything for us. And the last option lets us purchase a business interest of our own. You know what? I think let's purchase a business interest of our own. We are going to, in particular, take the Valladolid card, because that is just three cubes away from our current railway, and perhaps we can expand that on our next turn. 
Also, we can see that Valladolid costs three money, and we happen to have exactly three money, so we can spend that to the bank in order to take this business interest. Once again, once we connect up to Valladolid with one of our cubes, we will gain three income and then flip this over. Our action is done, so now we can take our income of eight money, and then we have to spend one money in interest, so that means we will end up with seven money. And then let's go ahead and pay off this loan by spending six money back to the bank. Our turn is done, so now yellow can go, and they've decided to purchase a business interest. For their first turn, they started a railway over here that connected Lisbon with the full plan of trying to get this business interest purchased and online as soon as possible. Now, this is going to cost them five money, and as you can see, they currently only have one money, so they have to take a loan to gain the five money to pay for this, and then they'll immediately pay the money from that loan to purchase this business interest. Normally, these go face up in front of the player until they connect that spot up, but if they have already connected to that specific urban hex, they can flip this over and immediately gain the benefit. That is obviously the case for the yellow player, so they can flip this over and increase their income by five, which will take them from seven all the way up to 12. Next up, they can flip this face over and keep it in front of them for endgame scoring. Remember, the player who has the most business interests, whether they are face down or face up, will get one victory point. Yellow's action is done, so now they can take their 12 income. And then immediately after that, they have to spend three money in interest, so they are going to end up with nine money. And they already had one, so now they are up to 10. At this point, they can pay off one loan, and they certainly want to do that, and that is going to cost them six money. All right, it's now time for the green player to go, and they have decided to expand a railway that they have already established out here on the map. Now, the build limit is currently at 7, which means they could put 7 cubes down, which would cost a whopping 42 money, and they've decided not to go that big, but they are going to place 4 cubes onto the map. Now, when you expand, you must add in at least one new urban hex to a railway that already exists, and every cube that you place must go into a hex that is adjacent to a hex that has a cube of your color. Now green is going to go one, two, and then three, four. And as you can see, that has connected up two more of these towns. Each one increases their income by two if they are the first one there, and they are indeed the first one into each of these towns. So their income will go up by four, bringing them up to 12. And then they do have to spend 18 money for placing four cubes down onto the board. Currently green has three money in front of them, so they are going to take three loans in order to get 15 money, and they can immediately spend that along with these three to pay for those cubes. After that, they can take their income, which is going to be 12 money, and then they have to pay four money in interest, so they are going to end up with eight money, and then they are going to immediately pay off one of these loans, so that means they'll spend six of that eight, so this will go up once, and they are going to end all this with just two money out of the 12 they got from their income. Green is done, so now red can go, and they are going to start a new railway. Now keep in mind they have this business interest for Bilbao, and also keep in mind that they can place up to eight cubes. This uh, build limit should have been pushed forward once uh, during the green player's turn. So this is now at the spot where it will stay for the rest of the game, and if you put eight cubes down, though, that is going to cost 52 money, which is quite a lot. It's worth noting that at the start of the game, players have 29 cubes in their supply, and putting eight down in one turn would drastically reduce the number of cubes that player has. Also keep in mind that the game will be over once any one player has used up all of their cubes, so some big builds could really push the end of the game, although we aren't anywhere near close to that at the moment. After thinking through their options, Red has decided to start pretty big and put six cubes down onto the board. They've decided to start building in Pamplona, then they'll head up and over to San Sebastian, then they'll head down and then into Bilboa, and finally they'll connect Vitoria Gastiz. Now they can take income for this. As you can see, they are the first into all of these urban hexes, and they have two of the yellow towns, one of the purple minor cities, and one of the red major cities. This means their income will go up by 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2, which is 11, and then they also can cash out this business interest that they picked up on their first turn. That is going to increase their income by 4, which brings them up to 15, and then this can be flipped face down and put in front of them. Now that is a great amount of income, but before they can take it, they do have to pay for those track costs. Now they don't have any additional track costs, but 6 tracks alone are going to cost 33 money, and at the moment the red player has no money at all. 
This means they must take seven loans. So they're going to go from one all the way down to eight. So this is obviously a big expenditure to try and get a large infrastructure going early on in the game. Now, the seven loans they took just gave them 35 money and they have to spend 33 of it. So that means they'll have two money left over. And now they can take their 15 money income and after that pay eight money in interest. So that means after they pay this, they are going to have six money and then they are going to immediately spend that money paying off one of their loans. This means they have just two money to their name and seven loans still to pay back. Well, it's now our turn and we have one money to our name and we can either start a new railway, expand a previous railway, or merge two railways. Although at the moment, we just have one railway out there, so merging is still not going to be something we can do. Uh, now, I think what we should do is expand. We do have this uh, business interest that I would love to activate as quickly as possible. As you can see, Valladolid is over here, and that is going to take three cubes to get to, and we could place five cubes if we want to, but I think we are going to be a little more cautious and only go with three. So we can expand like this. And then Valladolid is a minor city and we are the first one there. So we are going to gain three income, bringing us up to 11. And then we can cash this out, which will increase our income three more times, which means we are now at 14. After that, we have to pay for our track. We put three down, so that is going to cost us 12 money. And we currently have one. So we are going to have to take three loans. That is going to get us 15 money. And then we could spend a 12, which means we will have three left over. And then we can take our income of 14 and after that pay our interest of three. So that is 11 money. And I think let's spend six of that 11 in order to pay off one of our loans. So that means we are going to gain five at the end of all of that. That means we have nine money to our name, which is a pretty good position to be in considering we do currently only have two loans. Our turn is done. So now the yellow player can go and they've decided to start a new railway. This can't connect up to anything they've already built and they are fine with that. They are going to go into Porto and then Braga. In this way, they've connected at least two urban hexes and the major red cities give four income and the yellow towns give two. So that is going to be six income total. 12 plus six will bring them up to 18 income. And then they do have to spend seven money for placing two cubes down. They only have four, so they are going to take a loan and then pay that five back along with two in order to pay off those rails. Then they are going to take their income, which is 18, and then pay three in interest. So that is going to be 15 total. And then they'll spend six of that 15 in order to pay off one loan. So that means they are going to get nine money. They can take a 10 and put one back into the supply. Next up, the green player can go and they want to start a new railway. They are going to place three cubes down for this and it will start in Valencia and then connect up to Castellón de la Plana. The red major city will get them four income and the yellow town will get them two. So that is six income total, which will bring them from 12 up to 18, just like yellow. Now that is three cubes that they just put down. So they have to pay 12 money and they currently only have two. So they are going to take out two loans and then immediately pay that 10 money back along with these two to fully pay off those tracks. Now they can take their income, which is going to be 18. And after that, they can pay the five interest that they have. So that is 13 money. Then they are going to spend six of that 13 to pay off one of their loans, which means they have seven money now. All right, it's time for the red player to go. And they have decided to purchase a business interest. In this case, they want to purchase the one for San Sebastian. As you can see, they have already uh, built into that. But before they get to that, they do have to pay for this. And that does cost three money. Unfortunately for Red, they only have two money right now, so they are just one money shy of paying this without a loan, and they already have a bunch of loans, but it looks like they're taking another. So that is going to bring them back to eight. They will get five money for that, and then of course they will pay three for the San Sebastian business interest, so they're going to take two money from the supply as a remainder. Next up, they can immediately flip this over and increase their income by three, so that will bring them up to 18, and now they can take that income. So that will be 18 money. And after that, they do have to pay nine in interest. So that leaves them with just nine left over. And they will spend six of that nine in order to pay off one of their loans. So that means they are going to end up gaining three money. All right, it's now time for us to take our turn. Now, I think what we should do is start a new railway. And in particular, I think let's start way up in the Northwest. The reason for that is because we can connect Vigo up to A Coruña. And both of those have business interests that we could potentially buy. 
Now this is pretty far away from our other rail line, and I would probably like to connect these by the time the game ends to try and vie for having the longest single rail line for that victory point, and it seems to me like connecting these up is certainly a possibility. Now I am going to talk about the details of endgame scoring soon, uh, but for now let's continue on with our turn. In order to connect these two up, we do have to put four cubes down. And then each of these are minor cities, and we are the first into both, so that is going to be 3 plus 3, or 6 more income. We were at 14, so that's going to bump us up to 20. And at this point, I do want to mention that you can go above 20 income. If you ever do go above, you just leave your cube here, and then take a new cube from your supply, and put that onto the tracker. So in this way, having a large income will also deplete the cubes that you have in front of you, and again, the game will end as soon as any one player has no cubes left. Now we do have to pay for the four track that we put down, and that is going to be 18 money. And right now we have nine. So that means we have to take out two loans, which is going to bring us up to four, and that gets us 10 money. And then we can spend that 10 back along with eight in order to fully pay off those tracks. Now we can take our income of 20 and then pay our interest of four. So that is going to be 16. And then we can spend six of that 16 to pay off one loan. So that means we are going to end with 10 more money than we had. Our turn is done. So now yellow can go and they want to purchase a business interest. We're not too surprised to see them select Porto considering they've already connected that up. So this is going to cost them four money and they easily have that. Next up, since they have already connected this city, they can flip this over and increase their income by four. And they were at 18, so that means this will go to the 20 spot, and they can add a new cube onto the two spot to show they have an income of 22. After that, this will be put face down in front of them, and then they can take their income of 22, and then they can subtract their two money interest from that, which leaves them with 20, and then they are going to pay off a loan by paying six of that 20, so they're going to end up gaining 14 more money. After that, green can go, and they want to take their first business interest of the game. They currently are connected to Valencia, and that is the one that they want to purchase, and that is going to cost them four money. At the moment, they do have seven, so they don't have to take out any loans to purchase this. They can spend the four, and then immediately flip this over because they are connected. So that is going to increase their income up to 22, just like the yellow player. After that, they are going to take their 22 income and then pay four money in interest. So that is 18 money. And then they will spend six of that money to pay off one loan. So they are going to gain 12 money. After that, the red player can go and they want to start a new railway. And they would like to start next to Madrid. So far, only two players have done this. And there is still a legal two cube new railway that can be built over here. So red will put these two cubes down like that. They've connected Madrid up with Toledo. And remember, Madrid is always going to pay six income, no matter who has connected first. And then Toledo is a town, so that's going to be two. So that means red will increase their income by eight. They were at 18, which means they now go all the way up to 26 income. And then they do have to pay for the two track, which is going to be seven money. Fortunately for them, they have exactly seven money in front of them, so they can spend all of that without having to take a loan. They now have no money, and it's time for them to take their income. They get 26 money minus eight, so that brings them to 18, and then they are going to spend six of that to pay off a loan, so they're going to gain 12 money total. All right, it's now time for us to go, and considering we just invested in a new railway that has some business interests associated, I think we should buy one of those. In particular, let's buy the Vigo business interest. That is going to cost us four money. And we have 11, so we can easily afford that. After that, we can immediately uh, flip this over because we are connected to Vigo. So that is going to increase our income by three. So we go from 20 up to 23. After that, we can take 23 income and then pay our three interest. So that means we have 20 and then let's spend six of that 20 to pay off one of these loans, which means we are going to gain 14 money. Our turn is done. So now yellow can go and they want to once again, start a new railway. This is going to be their third out here on the map. After considering their options, they want to place five cubes down. They are going to be connecting Madrid up to Avila and then over to Salamanca. That's going to increase their income by 6 plus 2 plus 2, or 10, which means they go from 22 up to 32. After that, the 5 track they laid is going to cost them 25 money, and they currently have 21. 
So they have to take a loan, which will get them five money. And now they can spend the 25, which means they are going to end up with just one money left over. After that, they can take their income, which is 32. They will subtract two from that, so they are gaining 30. And they'll subtract six in order to pay off one loan, which means they are going to gain 24 money. After yellow is done, the green player can go, and they want to perform the first merge action of the game. Now, a merge action lets you put cubes down onto the map so that after you are done placing them, so that after you are done placing them, two formerly separate railroads are now connected into one. Now, when you do this, you don't have to connect up any new urban hexes, and the green player has decided to connect this railway with that one by putting these two cubes over here. Now, every time you do a merge action, you gain a bonus one income as a reward for merging up two railways. So that means green will now increase their income once, and they would have increased it more if the new cubes that had been placed had gone on to urban hexes, but obviously that was not the case here. So green's income will go up once to 23 because of that bonus income from merging these two railways together. Now they did put two cubes down, which means they do have to spend seven money. And now they can take their income. That is going to be 23, and they'll subtract three for that interest, so they are getting 20. And then they'll spend six of that 20 to pay off one of their loans, so that means they are going to end with 14 more money than they had. Well, green is done, which means it's now time for the red player. But before we see their turn, I think it's now time to talk about how we win this game. We can start by talking about how the game ends. And once again, that will be at the end of any player's turn where that player has no more cubes in front of them. Uh, at that point, we immediately go into final scoring. And there are seven different ways that players are going to gain victory points. For each of these, we are going to be comparing how much we've done one thing compared to our opponents. And the first of these involves the income track. The player with the most income is going to gain one victory point, and if there is a tie, then all of the tied players gain that point. Now, it's worth noting that ties work this way for the rest of the scoring conditions that I'm about to talk about. So, once again, the highest income is going to be worth one point, and then you can actually clear off these income tokens and put a token down onto the income track to count the number of victory points that you have. Now, the next thing that you do is check to see who has the most money, although before you check the amount of money everybody has, each person has to spend 20 money back to the bank for every single loan they have at the end of the game. Once again, each loan is worth negative 20 money, and once all of the loans have been paid off, the player with the highest amount of money is going to gain two victory points. Points. Once again, if there is a tie for the most money, all of those tied players will get the two points. Now, after that, we are going to check to see who has connected the most towns on the board. That player will gain one point. Then we'll check to see who has connected the most minor cities. That player will also get a point, and then uh, one point will go to the player with the most connected major cities. And after that, it's time to check the actual cubes out here on the map. Now, the player who has the largest single run of cubes is going to gain one victory point for it. And it's worth noting that branching paths do not count. You just find the longest single strand of cubes that you have on the board to get that point. It's also worth noting that technically you could tie with yourself for this. If you have two lines that are equal in length and both happen to be the longest lines in the game, then you would actually get two points for that. That being said, I imagine tying with yourself for that scoring is something that happens quite rarely. Now, the final thing that we will get points for is the player with the most business interest cards will get one victory point, and that counts all business interest cards players have, whether they are face up or face down in front of them. After scoring all seven of those conditions, the player with the most victory points will be the winner, and if there's a tie, then those tied players share in the victory. Now, at this point, the yellow player is winning on the income track, and they are tied with us for those business interest cards. Uh, the green player has the longest uh, single line of track on the board, and uh, obviously the red player is not doing very good when competing to have the most money at the end of the game uh, with all of those loans. Uh, now, these uh, different town, minor, and major cities are all some things we have to keep in mind as we are planning our routes and competing with our opponents. Each of those is worth one point, so trying to find at least one of those to score at the end of the game is probably something we all want to do, although only three of those score and there are four of us. Uh, once again, ties are friendly though, so it's possible there could be quite a bit of scoring from that once we reach the end of the game. With all that in mind, let's jump back to the game, and the red player can go. Now, they've decided to start a new railway, and they'll do it by putting three cubes down. That is going to connect Barcelona up with Tarragona. Now, Barcelona is a major city, so that is a plus four income, and then this town is plus two, so red is going to increase their income by six, which means that they have an income of 32, and then they do have to pay for these cubes, which is going to be 12 money. Fortunately for them, they have exactly 12 money, so they don't have to take out any more loans. 
and now they can take their income of 32. From that, they are going to have to pay seven interest. So that means they are at 25, and then they'll spend six of that to pay off one loan. So they're going to end up with 19 more money. Red is done, which means we can go. And I'm pretty sure on our last turn, we forgot to move our action pawn. It's on the start railway line, and we only have two railways out here. And uh, I know that we built this one before we took that business interest. So I think this should actually be over there for the start of our turn. Now, at the moment, we have 21 money available to us, so we could start a new line. Uh, we could also expand something or try to merge, although that would be a very expensive merge out there. Now, with 21 money, we are just four money shy of putting five tracks down, which would uh, force us to take a loan, or we could put four tracks down and not need to take a loan at all. And let's expand over here in the west. We can extend out from Vigo and go like this. Remember, each of the spots on the board can have up to two cubes in them. Now, this is going to have a cost of 18, plus we'll have to spend an extra one money for going into this uh, hill area, and then an extra money for going into any spots that already have a cube. So that is three extra money. So that is 18 plus three or 21. And remember, we actually have exactly 21 at the moment. So let's go ahead and spend this right now, and now we can gain our extra income. Now remember, if you are the second cube into an urban hex, you get one less income than normal. The red major cities normally give four, and the yellow towns normally give two, so that means we will actually get three plus one, or four increased income total. That will bring us from 23 up to 27, and of course, it's nice getting into these urban hexes first instead of second like that, but we are trying to potentially connect our railways and I figured it maybe makes sense to sweep down through here and connect up through some of these towns instead of just going up through the top. Uh, maybe I am overthinking this, but also bringing in another one of these major cities is a good thing. Remember, we are competing to have the most major cities, minor cities, and towns, and connecting this major city could have a big impact on the final score once we get there. Of course, it's possible that this won't actually matter, but either way, I still think this is a good plan for us. I suppose it's worth noting that we don't have to connect up like this. In fact, we don't have to connect at all, but if we connect, then we could vie for having the longest railroad. Uh, one thing we could potentially do is actually connect over like this and then try to extend this railway down to have an even longer line. That actually probably makes more sense than connecting these two like this. But either way, we'll just have to see what we decide to do later on in the game. Now we have paid for those cubes already, so now we can take our income. That is going to be 27 money, and then we have to subtract two interest, so that brings us to 25. And then let's spend six of that in order to pay off one loan. So that means we are going to end with 19 more money. Well, it's now time for the yellow player to go, and they have decided to purchase the business interest for Seville. Now, Seville is over there, and obviously yellow is not over on that spot yet, but by purchasing this, I think it's a pretty safe bet they're hoping to either head over there or just start a new railway there at some point soon. Now, this is going to cost them four of their money, and now they can take a rather large income. That's going to be 32. Then they will spend one for their interest, so they're at 31, and then they are going to spend six of that, bringing them to 25 in order to pay off their last loan. So the yellow player is currently the only player with no loans to their name. After yellow is done, now the green player can go. And they've decided to start a new rail line. And considering they can tell that uh, yellow is angling over here for Seville, green has decided they're going to get over here first and get more income out of it than the yellow player would. Obviously, the fact that the Seville card is gone means Seville is less good for the green player for purchasing more of those business interests, but they are planning on connecting to a minor city, and they could take the business interest for that minor city later. After considering their options, they're going to put four cubes down, connecting Seville up to Cadiz. Seville will get them four income, and Cadiz will get them three, so that is seven more income, which will bring them from 23 up to 30. Now they have to pay for the four cubes they put down, so that is going to be 18 money, which they can afford. And now it's time for them to take income. They get 30 money, and then they will spend two interest, so that brings them to 28. And then they will spend six of that money, bringing them to 22, in order to pay off one of their loans. Well, green is done, which means red can go, and they have decided to purchase a business interest. Now, before they actually do this, I realized now that they actually should have this San Sebastian business interest already. They purchased this a little while ago, and when I tried to fix something, I accidentally put it back out there. So technically, the red player should have this already, and now they are going to buy the business interest for Barcelona. 
that is going to cost them four money. And since they already have a presence in that spot, they can immediately cash this out in order to increase their income by four. They were at 32, so now they go up to 36. And now they can take their income. So they get 36 money, and then they will spend five of that. So they are now at 31. And now they're going to spend six of that 31 to pay off one loan. So all told, they are going to get 25 money. Red is done, so now we can take our turn. And I think let's go over here to buy a business interest. In particular, we'll take one from the Northwest. As you can see, the card for Acarunia is over here. So we can spend three money to take that. And since we already have presents, we can flip this over and increase our income three times. We were at 27, so that's going to bring us up to 30. And now we can take our income. That will be 30 money minus one for the interest. So we have 29. And then let's spend six of that to pay off our last loan. So that means we are going to get 23 more money. We are done, which means the yellow player can go, and they are going to start a railroad over here in Seville. Uh, the green player is there already, so they will get uh, a little bit less income, and they'll have to spend more money on it. But remember, the yellow player does have the Seville business interest that they do want to activate. After thinking this through, they are going to put five cubes down. One will go into Seville, which is going to cost one extra money because it's the second cube there. And then they are going to wrap up over here to connect Cordoba. The minor city will give them three income, and then the major city would give them four, but they are the second ones there, so they are going to get one less. So that is three plus three, or six more income. They were at 32, so now they are at 38. And they do have to pay for those five tracks. That is going to be 25 money plus one more, because one of those cubes was placed into a hex that already had a cube. So they have to spend 26 money, and they do indeed have that. Next up, they can take their income of 38 and then pay no interest at all. And then also, they aren't going to be paying off any loans because they don't have any. So they're just going to take 38 money from the bank. Actually, hold on a second. They should have cashed in this business interest as soon as they built those. So that means their income should have gone up four more times. So instead of being at 38, it should actually be at 42. So they should have gained four more money. So let's have them take a five and put a one back. Now the yellow player is doing very well in this game so far, and their turn is over, so that means the green player can go. After considering their options, green is going to expand this railway, and they are going to do it by placing five cubes. They're going to place them like this, and that means they've connected two more towns to that railway. Each town adds two income, so they will increase their income by four, which means they go from 30 up to 34. Now they do have to pay for those five cubes, and that is going to cost them 25 money which they do have, and then they can take their income of 34, and then they will spend one in interest, so that is going to be 33, and then they will spend six of their money to pay off that loan. So they will end up gaining 27 money. Well, green is done, which means red can go, and they have decided to start a new railway. Now they are going to start down over here, and they want to place six cubes out. They will begin in Valencia, which is going to have an extra money penalty because this is the second cube there. And then they are going to head down to Alicante. Then they will head over to Murcia. When they increase their income, they will get three for Murcia, two for Alicante, and then just three for Valencia. Normally that would be four, but it's subtracted by one because they were the second cube there. So all told, that is eight more income, which means they will go from 36 up to 44. Now they do have to pay for those cubes. Six cubes is going to cost 33, and then there is an extra cost for going into Valencia second. So they have to spend 34 money, and they do indeed have that. Next up, they can take their income of 44, and then subtract four from that for their interest. So that brings them to 40, and then they are going to pay off a loan. So that means they are going to get 34 money total. All right, red is done, which means we can take our turn again. And I think we want to do a really expensive merger. Uh, I'd like to throw a bunch of cubes on the board and try to connect these two up. And we are going to put eight cubes down onto the board, which is going to cost us a minimum of 52 money. At the moment, we only have 39 money, so we are going to be taking some loans for this. But I think that is fine. Uh, remember, only the player who has the most money at the end of the game will get the two victory points. And I'm starting to wonder if we can actually catch the yellow player up when it comes to having enough money. So maybe we should not worry about that so much and try to gain points for having a long line on the board and for having presence in a whole bunch of these urban hexes. 
So let's focus over here, and my plan is to head east towards Zamora. Then we can keep going east, and then that is going to bring in Barganka. Now at this point, we can go up a little bit, and we are going to have to go through some hills, so that is going to be plus one uh, money as a cost, and then we can go here into Arense, and that is going to combine those two rail lines. So that is going to be 52 money plus one for that hill, so overall, that is 53 money that we have to spend. As I said before, we currently have 39 money, which means we need 14 more money to pull this off. That is going to be three loans, so we can go down three times. And then we can pay all of our money as well as 14 out of the 15 money we just got for those loans. So that means after all this is done, we have one money. Uh, now we do get to increase our income. So let's look back over here and you'll notice we added in three of these towns. So that is two plus two plus two or six more income. And we always gain one income as a bonus for merging our railways. So that one more is going to mean we get seven income total. We were at 30, so now we have 37. And at this point, we can take that income. Now we have 37, and then we will pay 3, so we have 34. And then I figure, let's go ahead and pay off a loan. So that means we are going to get 28 money. That's finished our turn, and it is worth noting that we only have 7 cubes left, and the green player also only has 7 cubes. So the game is not that far away from its end, I don't think. Now the yellow player can go, and they currently have a whole bunch of cubes, and they also have a ton of money they can potentially spend. After considering their options, yellow has decided they are going to expand. They don't think they're going to be able to combine all of their railways up in a way to actually compete for having the longest railway, so they've decided not to worry about merging. In this case, they are going to expand six times. They're going to head across this river over here to Viso, then they're going to head down to Coimbra, and then connect up to Liera. Six cubes costs 33 money, and they have to pay one more for that river spot, so this will cost them 34 money. So they can spend 35 and then take one back from the bank. Next up, they are going to increase their income by 2, plus 2, plus 2, or 6, which means their income is now 48. Well, now they can take that income of 48, and they don't have to spend any interest or pay off any loans, so they're just going to take 48 money. They'll take a 50 in this case, and put two money back into the bank. Yellow is done, which means the green player can go, and they only have seven cubes left in front of them. After considering their options, green is going to start a new railway, and they're going to put four cubes down over here. They're going to connect Malaga over here to Granada. The four cubes are going to cost 18 money, plus another one money for going through these hills, so that is 19 money total, which they can spend by putting a 20 back and grabbing a one. That's going to increase their income by six, which means they go from 34 up to 40. Now they can take 40 money as an income, and they don't have any interest or loans to pay off, so they simply take the 40 money, and that has finished their turn. Green is done, so red can go, and with 10 cubes, there is no way they can actually get all of them out here on the board in the one turn, so they are definitely not going to be ending the game. In this case, they are going to choose the expand action, and they are going to use this to expand west, and this is going to bring in three new towns for them. They did just put 7 cubes down, and 7 cubes will cost 42 money. And they currently only have 40 money, so they will have to take a loan for this. So they will go from 3 loans back down to 4 to gain 5 money, and then they are going to spend 42 of this 45 money, which means they have 3 money left over. Now they did add 3 towns to that railway, so that means their income will increase 6 times, taking them from 44 up to 50. Now they can take their income of 50, and from that uh, pay 4 money back for interest, so that means they are at 46, and then they will pay off one of these loans, which means they are going to get 40 money total. Well, they are done with their turn, which means it's now time for us to go, and we have 7 cubes in front of us. This means technically we could end the game right now if we were able to place all of these out. And you'll notice if our income goes up 4 more times, we'll have to place a cube down, and that would leave us with 6 other cubes to spend. Now technically we could spend all 7 of these cubes and put them out onto the map, we would just not be able to increase our income beyond 40 because we wouldn't have any more cubes to put down onto the board. Since we could end the game, I think we should look over here and see how we are competing. Now at the moment we have 3 of these business interests, the yellow player also has 3, and so does the red player, so we are tied. Obviously we are not winning the income track or the money race, I think the yellow player might have that on lockdown. They have a ton of money right now. 
Now, when it comes to the longest railway, ours is currently the longest out here, which is great to see. So that is a point that we could get. And now we can check the different urban hex scorings. We currently have five towns and the red player has eight. So if we are able to get up to eight, we could tie them and get a point for that. When it comes to the minor cities, we have three of them and the green player has three and we are currently tied for the most. And with the major cities, we have uh, one and the red player actually has three of them. This means if we want to end the game, we should probably spend our cubes getting another one of the minor cities so that we are not tied with the green player so that we are the only ones to get those points. Actually, it might be better for us just to try and get three more of the yellow towns. That way we could tie with the red player because that would gain us a point on effectively everyone but red instead of just trying to knock a point away from the green player. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and start a new railway, and if we could uh, connect four of the different towns, then we would actually take the lead on that track. But with seven cubes available, I just don't see a way to connect up four new towns in one action. So let's start a railway over here, and we are going to place six of these cubes down. That means we are going to have one left over, but that's fine, because we are going to be putting it onto the income track. We did connect three towns, so that's going to be six more income, which will bring us from 37 up to 43. We also laid six tracks, so we have to spend 33 money. And we currently have 29, so we are going to have to take a loan. That will get us five money, and then we can spend the 33, and then take our income of 43. From that, we can spend three for interest, so that gets us to 40, and then let's go ahead and spend six to pay off one loan. So that is going to be 34 money for us. Well, our turn is over and we have no more cubes, and remember that is the only end game condition for the game. This means the game ends immediately, and now it's time for us to score our points. The first thing that we score is the income track, and the player with the highest income will get one point. The red player has 50 compared to the 48 of yellow, so red is going to win it, and what that means is we can now clear off all of these tokens, and then the red player can put a token here to show they have one point, and then we can put a single cube of the other players onto the zero spot. Now the next thing that we have to do is score for having the most money, although before we get there, every player has to pay 20 money for every loan they currently have. We have two loans, so that means we have to pay 40 money, and we don't even have 40 money, and we don't have to take new loans to actually pay this off. We simply know that we are going to end up in the negative, and you are not eligible to gain points for having the most money if you end up in a negative amount. Now, the red player has three loans, so they have to spend 60 money. They have 43, so that means they're going to spend all of their money, and they are going to end in the negative as well. So they are not in contention for these two points, much like we are. Now, that means the yellow and green players can count their money, and yellow has 76 money, whereas the green player has less than that by a decent amount. So yellow is in the majority, and remember, this track scores two victory points unlike the rest of the conditions. So yellow will gain two points. Next up, we can score the business interests. Now the player with the most of these, whether they are face down or face up, will get one point. And as you can see, we actually have a three-way tie. Uh, that means red, yellow, and uh, blue over here are all going to gain one victory point. And this is certainly unfortunate for the green player, who is the only one not to score. So yellow has three points, red has two, and we have one. Next up, one point will go to the player with the longest single railway, and that's going to be us. We have 19 in this line, whereas the green player has, I believe, 16, so that means we get one point, which brings us up to two. Next up, one point will go to the player who has connected the most towns, which means we should look over here to the map, and the green player has connected six, the yellow player has connected seven, and we connected eight, and the red player also connected eight. That means red and blue will each get a point, so we now have three and we're tied with yellow. And now the player with the most of the minor cities will get one point. The yellow player has just one, the green player has one, two, three, and then the red player has one, two. Now fortunately for us, we have one, two, three, so that means we are tying with the green player for having the most, which means green gets a point, and we also get a point, and that puts us into the lead. The final thing that we have to score is having the most major red cities. The red player has one, two, three. We have one, yellow has two, and the green player has two. So that means red is going to gain one point by themselves, and that means they have four points, and we actually have a tie score at the end of the game. We have four, and red has four, and remember, if there is a tie at this point, then that means the tied players share the victory, so that means two of us have won the game. 
Well, this four-player game has come to an end, and I do want to mention one last thing before this tutorial comes to a close, and that is insolvency. Now, no players got uh, particularly close to this down here. Uh, that is when you have 16 loans, and when you are insolvent, you are not allowed to actually build a railway track or purchase business interests, and on a turn where you become insolvent, if you do not make more income than the 25 money you have to spend in interest, then you essentially bankrupt, and you are effectively out of the game. You leave your cubes out here on the board, but you do not take any more turns. Now, obviously, that only happens when you have a ton of loans, and in this game, we didn't have any loans get beyond, I think, the 8 mark over here, so it's possible that uh, in other plays of this one, players might be a little bit riskier taking more loans to try and cover more ground sooner on in the game, but of course, you might risk insolvency, which is something you do have to keep in mind. Well, at this point, I do think the tutorial has come to a close. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Iberian Railways. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.